T. Higgins, 15 more targets for T. Higgins in this game on Sunday against the Ravens. Now he has 43 targets on the season. He missed a couple, but only 256 receiving yards. And I get that his ADOT has been low, but man, like yards per target for T. Higgins has been really bad. I think that's going to bump back up. I'm with you on T. Higgins. I think you absolutely, I think he's a buy. Eight and a half, eight and eight point six targets per game. The trajectory on the Bengals uh situation neutral uh pass rate has gone has gone steadily up. They played this, they, their coaching staff deserves credit. They really play. I know it was frustrating early on that we weren't getting the pass volume we expected, but the efficiency was there. They didn't trust their O-line necessarily. And the O-line has been like league average. And uh, Joe Burrow, I mean, no problems coming off the, the November ACL tear. So I, I think the Bengals coaching staff deserves credit here. They played this situation perfectly from a real life standpoint. And now we're starting to benefit in fantasy. You know, I have optimism for both Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool going forward. But, you know, the days of Big Ben throwing for like 350 yards and four touchdowns, I think are pretty much done. I think that this is the time to buy Chase Claypool. Uh, his bye week is now out of the way. No Juju Smith-Schuster. He played a lot more in two receiver sets in the game before their off week. And, you know, I know that it's, it's tough to trust Ben's arm and all that, but with talent like Chase, what Chase Claypool brings to the table and his target upside and his playing time going up, like this is a situation to jump on, I think. Uh, he's going to have some big games in the second half of the year. His Ridley stuff, man. I don't know if you have a Cal Ridley take, you know. I'm not a team watch the tape guy, a player as talented as Calvin Ridley getting 10, 11, 12 targets per game and not producing. I'm going to keep going back to the well. I don't know if you've seen anything on what's wrong with Calvin Ridley. With Calvin Ridley, I think that it's one of the situations where you need the, where you needed the other guys to step up in the offense. And we have seen that now from Kyle Pitts in consecutive games. I think that that's going to help. I think that the targets are not going to go away for Calvin Ridley. He's averaging almost uh, almost 10 and a half. I think he's like 10.3 targets per game. I, I mean, I, I still think he's a buy low. Maybe I'm being too stubborn about this. I don't I don't think so. I think he's a really good player. I think the volume is there. I think big plays are going to come. And I think that it helps that there are other playmakers emerging in this offense that defenses need to account for. And that's going to end up coming full circle. And Calvin Ridley is going to have a big game real soon. It, it's not ideal the way Atlanta is calling plays. I don't think they're still not passing enough, but at least Matt Ryan, like he, he's producing to other guys. He's just not producing to Calvin Ridley. So like it's, it wouldn't be fair to say that Matt Ryan is off a cliff and that's why Calvin Ridley isn't producing. So yeah, I mean, obviously I'm with you. I'm sticking with Calvin Ridley. Last thing on Carolina we should hit is, is the Robbie Anderson stuff. You know, you said you still want to buy low on Calvin Ridley. The, the amount of targets for Robbie Anderson has been just as good of course they're coming from sam darnold and it's been absolutely brutal mm -hmm. but i think robbie has to take some of the blame here also like he's sure. been awful also 20 targets over the last two weeks 25 yards i assume you're not buying low on robbie like you are on calvin ridley well robbie anderson is like gonna get dropped this week so you're not really buying anything you know i, I do think that he's worth rostering to see if he can get it together i mean we know robbie anderson can play the panthers know that he can play that's why they gave him the big extension before the season it's just gotten off to a really, really rocky start. And sometimes players go through six, seven, eight game stretches where they stink, you yeah. know? But I, I think ultimately he, he'll probably get it together. I think if he gets dropped this week, and I think he's going to get dropped in a lot of places, you know, you should always be trying to add guys that are still averaging like eight targets a game. Tyler Higby, the peripherals are there. You know, it's, it's yeah. kind of similar a little bit with Daryl Henderson. The peripherals are definitely there. Daryl Henderson, 88% of the snaps this past week, 18 plus touches in four straight. Tyler Higby, fourth in the NFL in red zone targets. He has the same number of red zone targets as Mike Evans, and he has five targets inside the 10 yard line, but only one tight end or only one touchdown there. Yeah. So this is a guy who's headed for positive regression. Um, uh, you know, I, I think you, you if you got him, you keep starting him. 
If somebody drops him because he had, what, two games in a row below 40 yards or whatever, pick him up. I think he's an every-week fantasy starter at the weakest position in fantasy.